Hi, I'm Kenny Yates. Welcome to Hold the Hope. And this is our regular weekly message. And today is a special day. Today is National Religious Freedom Day. This is the day that we remember and bring awareness to the fact that everyone has a right to their own religious beliefs, including us Christians. The website nationaltoday.com wrote, and I quote, the Virginia statue for religious freedom is also one of the core foundations preserving an individual's right to choose whichever faith one prefers without any fear. The concept of religious freedom is essential for Americans because the idea is rooted in Article 18 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. The article states, everyone has the right to freedom of thought, conscience, and religion. This right includes freedom to change his religion or belief and freedom either alone or in community with others and in public or private to manifest his religion or belief in teaching, practice, worship, and observance. Religious freedom is also a subject that organizations such as the United Nations deeply care about." End of quote. I only wish that that last sentence was really, really true. If someone or some organization such as the UN, the United Nations, cared deeply about something it would show in their actions. It would show in the results that they achieve. Yet nations are allowed to join the UN, the United Nations, who care deeply about religious freedoms, mind you. But these nations are allowed to participate in, enjoy benefits of being a member of the great UN. And yet the UN cast a blind eye to their blatant trampling of religious freedom and the rights of their citizens. Therefore, to me, to me, it is a farce. It is what we called a, how do you say, lip service? Turn with me, please. Matthew chapter 24, verse nine through 12. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and put you to death, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will fall away and betray one another and hate one another. And many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. And because lawlessness will increase, the love of many will grow cold. According to Jesus' own words, all nations will unite against Christians and hate us for his name's sake. If it's all nations, it sounds to me like that would include the United Nations. They just don't like our Lord and Savior. They just don't like Jesus Christ. But why? Why? I'll tell you why. It's a spiritual thing. The world has gone secular because it's run by secular men and women. And the name of Jesus is left out because that's the only name given to us by which we can be saved. It is a name that the secular would rather steer away from. Because once you come in contact with that name, you will no longer try to deceive the world. You will no longer have selfish ambitions. You will no longer have selfish desires. You will no longer lie and cheat and steal. You will no longer murder. You will no longer be bound as a slave to sin. For whom the sun sets free is free indeed. But wicked men, power hungry men and women, greedy men and women do not want to be free. They do not want to change. They are blinded. They are deceived. They have been led astray. No other name that we know of can free you from being bound up. No other name that we know of can save, can heal, can deliver, or can restore. Restore relationships. There's no other name. There is none that we know of except the name of Jesus Christ. The lie was formed and propagated that Christians should not be involved in politics. Well, if Christians aren't involved in creating laws, then who, pray tell, might create these laws, these fair and just laws for Christians? The short answer is no one, no one will. 
And this, this, what, what we have now, will be what you will get. A shutout of the life-saving gospel and a hatred for Christians and a hatred for Jesus, the Savior of the whole world. But someone will ask, why the need for religious freedom, Brother Kenny? Besides what I've already mentioned, well, again, according to the website nationaltoday.com, and I quote, more societies that protect religious freedoms are more likely to experience a surge in economic and social development. A nation that promotes inclusivity is a happy one. End of quote. Please understand that the nationaltoday.com is not a religious website. So I want you to listen to what they said one more time. Societies who protect religious freedom experience a surge in economic and social development. But not only that, they are a happy society. Yet the UN, who cares deeply about your religious freedom and their religious freedom and other, religious, uh, other people's religious freedoms, are letting their member nations trample and stomp on the rights of their citizens to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. Some of you may have never heard about Christians being persecuted in our world today, in our times, in these, these so-called civilized days. In fact, if you go to Rome today, they will strongly deny that Christians were ever persecuted. They say that persecution never existed in their country, claiming that on, the only ones who, were, who fought the wild animals in the arenas were the trained gladiators, which simply is not true. In other words, it's a lie. Let me tell you about Diwo. Diwo lives in Nigeria and is a member of the Fulani people group. According to worldwatchmonitor.org, the Fellini people are the world's largest nomadic group. About 20 million people dispersed across Western Africa. They reside mostly in Nigeria, Mali, Guinea, Cameroon, Senegal, and Niger. They also can be found in Central African Republic and Egypt. The Fellini compromise... Com the, the Fellini comprise the most populous and politically influential of more than 250 ethnic groups in the country. End of quote. Diwo was part of the Fellini people. He was a Muslim when he started having a series of vivid dreams in which he saw heaven and encountered Jesus, which changed his life forever. He took what little money he had and purchased a Bible. He began to read. He began to study. He began to learn about Jesus. And from what he learned, he understood his need for salvation, which led him to believe in Jesus. He believed that Jesus was the only way to life. So he accepted Jesus as his Lord and Savior. He was living with his cousin at the time. And upon hearing that Diwo had become a Christian, his cousin kicked him out of the house. He burned his Bible and he, he told his friends. So about 20 young, young men gathered around um, Diwo, surrounded him and bound him hand and foot. But Diwo was not afraid. He told them that they could cut his neck. But the only thing that he was afraid of was that they would never get the chance to get the salvation that he had experienced and the one that he had. A crowd had gathered to watch as the young man began to cut Diwo's face. Just then, a police van pulled up and a policeman stepped out and dispersed the crowd. Everybody ran away. After questioning Diwo, he, 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 he learned that Diwo was a Christian. He told him that, the policeman told Diwo that he was a Christian too, and that he was the only Christian in the van, and he did not want his boss to know that they were both Christians. So he slipped Diwo some of his own money and told him to get out of the city as quickly as he could. Diwo understood the reality of things. He understood that apart from Jesus, there is no salvation. There is no life. 
We need religious freedom in order to tell the good news so that others may hear, so that others may believe, so that others may live and not die. Jesus is the only hope for mankind, and without him, we are broke and destitute. There, therefore, we need religious freedom so that others can come to the belief in Jesus, so that they can inherit eternal life. This is what Dewo is teaching the Fulani Christians he is working with, and I want to quote it. In everything you do, Love your neighbor as yourself. Even those who are coming to kill you, try and love them more than you love yourself. End of quote. They have taken to heart what Paul was explaining to us in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1 through, through 3. If I speak in tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have, if I deliver up my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. Without love, we are nothing. We can have everything. We can gain the whole world. But if we have not love, we have absolutely nothing. These are the teachings that Dewo and the Fellini Christians are trying to pass on to their children every single day. They teach them that they are to love, even love their enemies. We would do well to take a lesson from them. We would do well to teach and to pass on these truths to our children, to love. It is not about you. It's not about me. It's not about us. It's about Jesus. It's about salvation. It's about loving others that they may believe, that they may live, and that they may not die. Dewo's brother was murdered when a band of Fellini Muslims raided the Christian village where he lived with his wife and four children. Shouting and gunfire alert, alerted most of the, of the villagers that they were being attacked. The noise and confusion gave the villagers, the Christian villagers, an opportunity to escape into the mountains. But Dewo's brother, while fleeing, heard cries for help from his neighbor's eight-year-old daughter, and he went to rescue her. But before he could rescue her, he was caught and told to deny Christ and become a Muslim and they would spare his life. He refused and told them that Jesus loved them also. And even if they beat him, he forgives them. But they didn't beat him. They behated him. He, they, they, they chopped his head off with a machete and the young girl was never found. These are just some of the challenges that Christians face in today's religious climate. Not just sometimes, they are in fear of their life every single day. In 2019, Pastor Lai Jung Kei began serving a prison sentence of five and a half years after protesting the government's attempt to remove the cross that was on top of his church building. In 2018, the Chinese government began removing crosses from church buildings. They even removed them from, from the government-run churches in Han and Henan province, where they, they, they removed some 4,000 crosses that year. Smaller churches, they, they shut down completely. They closed them down completely. The members who gathered to sing hymns and to pray while the authorities were attempting to take down the crosses were beaten and arrested. They also removed the signs from inside the church building and then forced the, the churches to fly China's national flag, as well as hanging an image of President Hu Jinping in the sanctuary and installing security cameras that faced the congregation to see who were there and what were they, they were doing. In November 2014, Deacon Jang, he, he was kidnapped from China and put in a North Korean prison. Deacon Jang 
worked for Pastor Han, or he worked with Pastor Han to minister to the North Korean people who crossed over the border into China. Fifteen months later, Pastor Han was lured from his home and brutally stabbed to death in Changbei. Deacon Chang was sentenced to 15 years in prison for his ministry to the North Korean people. Since his imprisonment, several other prisoners have either encountered um, Deacon Chang or, or heard about him and his ministry, the report, was brought to them. The reason Deacon Chang was arrested was nothing more than feeding clothing, and given Bibles to North Koreans who crossed over the border into China. All he was doing was loving people, helping people find life. He welcomed all who came into his house, where they stayed some a few days, others stayed a few weeks. But he welcomed all, and he ministered to all who came. Yosef Nadarkhani, 45, was held 1,273 days after being arrested in July 2018 in Iran for being a Christian. These are some names who, um, who have been held in prison. Sahib Fadi held 1,272 days in Iran. Yasser held 1,272 days in Iran. Zhang Wang Shai held 2,632 days in North Korea. Miran Gaber Selassie held 6,435 days in Eritrea. Their crimes? Being a Christian, accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior. Loving God and loving mankind. These arrests and imprisonments, these persecutions and murders go on daily despite that in 1966 the United Nations developed the international covenant, the international covenant of civil and political rights, the ICCPR, in addition to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Article 18 of the ICCPR focuses on four elements of religious freedom. I want to list one. Let us just focus on this one. Everyone shall have the right to, to freedom of thought, conscience, and religion. This right shall include freedom to have or to adopt a religion or belief of his choice and freedom either individually or in community with others and in public or private to manifest his religion or belief in worship, observance, practice, and teaching. The UN cares deeply about your, religion, your religious freedoms, their religious freedoms. If that's the case, why are these countries continuously trampling on the rights of their citizens' religious freedoms? That's the question that we should have answered. The, the Washington Times published this article entitled, United Nations is coming for your religion. And I quote, the United Nations Special Rapporteur on Freedom of Religion or Belief said in a report presented to Human Rights Council that faith must not be used to justify violence or discrimination, and that when religion seems to provoke acts of violence or discrimination, particularly against women and gays and transgenders, then the global body's own equal rights protection must take priority over the religious teachings. On the other hand, there's a Noda remark. Discrimination in all its forms is bad. So is violence. We get it. On the other hand, though, and this is where it gets dicey, this is the United Nations way of setting government over religion, of prioritizing government over God. Read carefully. 
think critically. This is a UN step towards supplanting the religions of the world. End of quote. Religions, and I mean Christianity in particular, is under grave attack. Today is National Religious Freedom Day. Let us take to heart this day. Let us let them hear our voice. We will speak up. We will not shut up. We will tell of the goodness of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We will say, or we will have to say, like the newsboys said in their song, Guilty. When did it become breaking a rule to say your name out loud in school? When your name's the only one that sets us free? When did it become incorrect to speak the truth about life and death? When your life gave us all eternity? Even if it gets me convicted, I'll be on my knees with my hands lifted. If serving you is against the law of man, if living out my faith in you is banned, then I'll stand right before the jury. If saying I believe is out of line, I'm judged because I'm going to give my life to show the world the love that fills me. I want to be guilty. The bottom line is this. Christians around the world are being persecuted right now, today. They are in need of clothes. They're in need of food. They're in need of, of medical supplies. They're in need of just the bare necessities of life. Many have to walk miles for something to eat. And if they're discovered that they're Christians, they're turned away empty-handed and hungry if they're not killed. Even in all of their dire need, even in all their dire straits, do you know what their main request is? It's not clothes. It's, it's, it's not money. It's not even food or water. It's prayer. Their main request is prayer. They said, even if you do nothing else for us, would you please remember us in your prayers? They covet our prayers. They see their biggest need is prayer. They say, if you who are free would only pray for us who are being persecuted, we will have the strength to hold on. We will have the strength to endure. That is their biggest cry. That is what they see is their biggest need. So if you're a Christian today, are you praying for the persecuted church? Are you praying for the imprisoned? Are you speaking up for your brothers and sisters? If you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, you can. Let me lead you to Jesus. All you got to do is to say this prayer. Believe it with your heart. Repeat after me. Heavenly Father, forgive me of my sins. Thank you, Lord, for dying for me. Thank you for giving me life. I accept your free salvation. And I ask you to help me to live out my faith in you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer, the Lord is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. What I suggest you do is to find yourself a Bible-believing church, not a progressive church, but a Bible-believing church, a church who, who still believes that there's a right way and a wrong way. Join that church. Be discipled in that church. Be taught in that church. Love people. Love God. The other thing I want you to do is to buy a Bible and read your Bible every day. Highlight your Bible. Commit those, those verses to memory. And when Jesus comes back, he'll find you doing what it is that you, you've been doing. And he'll take you to be with him that where he is, there you shall be also. I want you to know that we have, have, have um, placed a list of websites below that provide you with an opportunity to, to see these people who, who are being persecuted, who are being these men and women who, who are being um, um, killed daily 
because of their religious beliefs. Some of these websites give you um, an opportunity to, to write letters, donate funds, buy and, and, or, or donate medical supplies. They give you an opportunity to pray for these persecuted brothers and sisters. Also place a link for organizations that fight against religious, religious freedoms, such as the ACLJ. Just check out some of these links below. The Lord bless you and keep you. My name is Kenny Yates. This is Hold the Hope. Be blessed and stay blessed.